Today I'm sharing eight cards made with the Pink and Main July of 2024 Crafty Courtyard Kit called Sweet Birds. Hello and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. A few days ago I shared an unboxing video showing the contents of this kit. Here's a quick look at what's inside. I'm going to be using a few sketches from Challenge 15 for inspiration on my cards today. If you're not familiar with my quarterly card making challenges, I offer a free PDF printable that shows how to take six sheets of pattern paper and efficiently cut them so that you can make 15 cards. I will have links below in the description box to my website and to the introduction video that explains all about it. For this video, I will be showing how to take two of the cutting guides from challenge number 15 to make eight cards with four sheets of paper. We just have to make a couple of adjustments, so I will be showing you my entire process, with the exception of gluing the pieces down. Now the first thing I did was select four patterns, two that pair well together. For the first three cards, we're using sketches one through three since they all come from the same sheet of pattern paper. I've selected this yellow floral pattern for that. Then I'll be using the blue sheet with the stars on it for the big square piece in the center of sketch one and on the oval on sketch three. And then for the other two pattern papers, I selected these stripes in this floral pattern with the white background. Okay, so on my cutting guide, it shows these arrows. So I wanna pay attention since this is kind of directional since all the butterflies are going this way. Now, it's not going to really matter if they're sideways. You know, butterflies fly sideways. Um, and this, I'm probably going to end up making it a portrait card because I want sketch number two for all of these to be facing the right way. So, I'm going to go ahead and just cut this first paper according to the cutting guide. First, you cut it in half. And then you turn it and cut a three-inch square and then make one inch strips with the remaining. And then for the other side, you cut off a one inch strip. And then this one, I'm going to cut <clears throat> at a diagonal. So from corner to corner in my cut line. Let's see if I can line this up really well. And we'll do the same thing with this one. Next, I'm looking at the sketches in order to get the measurements that I'll need for the other pieces and layers. So I'm cutting a three and a half inch square out of the blue pattern paper with the stars. And then I'm gonna set this paper aside for now. Next, I'm taking one of the other papers and following the cutting guide for paper D, except for the cuts on the far right with the squares and the banner. So I'm first cutting off the bottom one inch strip and then cutting it at two and a quarter inches. And then on the bigger piece, I'm cutting again at two and a half inches. Oh, I'm sorry, two and a quarter inches, leaving two large pieces. The inch strip, I'm setting these aside for now. And then next, I'm cutting the other pattern using paper D, except I cut off the far right hand piece first, and then everything else, I followed the measurements. So now I have two pieces that measure two and three quarter by five inches, and then two that measure two and a quarter by five inches plus two more one inch strips. I'm just taking one of these one inch strips and cutting it to measure three and three quarter inches. My next step is to look at the measurements on the sketches to cut the layers that I need. So I'm starting with the layer for my center square, which should measure three and three quarter inches, and then a smaller three and a quarter inch square that is cut in half for the two triangle pieces. And I'll be placing all of these pieces into a cellophane bag. And I haven't cut any of my card bases yet, but I will be adding a top folding card base to this bag a little later. Next, in looking at sketch two, it doesn't call for any layers. These strips are lined up parallel in the center of the card. So I'm just going to glue them directly onto the card base. I cut this salon pink colored cardstock in half at four and a quarter inches, and then I scored it at five and a half to create my top folding card base. And I'm going to set these aside. Now for card sketch three, I'm using the other half of the pink card stock for my card base. And I'll be gluing the two triangles directly onto the card base for this one too. 
I'm taking the blue paper with the stars that I set aside to cut the oval piece in the center. This piece is exactly wide enough for me to use it with this stitched oval die that I've had in my stash for a while. And since this is stitched, I don't really need to add a layer to this. Now I'm moving on to the card sketches on the next page of the printable. I'm just looking at the size pieces I have and laying those together that will be needed for the cards along the bottom here. Uh, sketches 10, 11, and 12. Initially, I placed the stripe piece along with the shorter one inch floral strip to make card sketch 11 and also the reverse of that, but then I realized I needed the wider piece to make sketch 10, so I placed it with the one inch strip that was longer. And I'm setting this aside for a second to cut the four by five and a quarter inch layer that goes behind the pieces for sketch 10. And I went ahead and cut that strip across the middle and I placed all of that in a bag and set it aside. And then next, I'm cutting the layers that are needed for sketch 11. So I cut the green three and three quarter by five inch panel from the other half of that green paper. Now this sketch calls for one inch strips instead of layers, but you could certainly cut layers if you want to. The reason for the strips is basically to conserve supplies, but it's made to look like layers. So I decided to use this light blue metallic foil paper to cut my quarter inch strips. Um, and I need two that measure five inches and two that measure three and three quarter inches. And then as for the rectangle piece in the center of the card sketch, I'm going to hold off because I will probably have something to put in its place when I go to decorate the card. So now all this needs is a card base. So I'm just going to take the white ice rink card stock that came in the kit and cut it in half at five and a half inches to make two card bases. And then I'm taking the other white piece and cut it in half on the short end at four and a quarter inches to make two top folding cards. After scoring these, I like to use the corner of my scoring board to line up the edges before I burnish, just to make sure that it lines up properly. So at this point, I have sketches 10 and 11 complete, and now I'm looking at what pieces I have left to work with. Sketch 12 calls for the two and a quarter by five inch piece, which I have two of, so I'm gonna pair up one of these two pieces with the blue stars piece, and I'm gonna trim that down to measure two and a quarter by three, as what's shown on the sketch. And I decided I like the stars better with that floral pattern. And now I'm cutting the layers needed for sketch 12 out of this purple cardstock. And then I added a white side folding card base. Now with what I have left, I can make another card using sketch 11, except the piece that goes across the middle will be half of, a, half of an inch shorter than what the sketch calls for, which is totally okay. You don't have to follow these sketches exactly. Use what you have to make it work. As long as you can somewhat tell that you followed the sketch, you're good. And if you wanna enter the challenge for a chance to win prizes. I plan to use this purple and orange cardstock to cut my layers, but I'm going to set it aside to work with these one inch by two and a quarter inch pieces. So I have four strips, so I can use these with sketch 13 over on the next page of the printable. The middle strip on the sketch is gray, so that means it's not pattern paper from one of the cutting guides, so you can use cardstock or scraps. And I remembered that I had a little bit left of the blue stars paper after cutting out the oval earlier and it was just big enough for me to cut the same size as the other strips. The only thing I don't have pattern paper for on this sketch is the half circle and the quarter inch strip to the right. I'm not gonna worry about that for now. I just went ahead and cut the layers for card 13 off camera. So now I have one card for each of the sketches one, two, and three. One for sketch 10, two for sketch 11, one for sketch 12, and one for sketch 13. That's eight cards using four sheets of paper. So if you know you won't have time to complete 15 cards for the challenge, you may wanna tackle just half of the sketches and enter to win the individual sketch prizes. In order to be eligible to win the monthly and quarterly prizes, you will need to complete a set of 15 cards. But I just wanted to show you a way how you could still use the cutting guides and sketches to complete eight cards. So now that I have all of my card bases, layers, and pieces cut, I wanted to show you what papers I have left after cutting everything. So it's just a few strips and a few panels, 
And I did have to pull in an additional sheet of white cardstock for a card base, but I have one half left over that I can save for another card. So my next step is to figure out how I want to decorate my cards. So I have these two die sets that I will be using, and I'm going to take some colored cardstock to cut out the pieces for the birds, and then cut out the banners, leaves, and flowers out of white cardstock, and then color those with Copic markers, and then I'll decide what stamps I want to use for the sentiments. Now I had to use the picture on the back of the packaging of the bird dies to help pick out the colors that I used for the pieces, and I cut out two sets. I decided to keep them separate just so I don't get any of the pieces confused. So I'll assemble these birds later. And I took the remaining dies from the other die set and I added them to the bird dies that were already placed on my magnetic mat. This is on my Empress die cutting machine and these are the larger plates. So I have plenty of room to cut all of these out at once with room to spare. So I have a 7 by 11 inch piece of white cardstock that covers up all of my dies. So I ran this through my die cutting machine and I will color the pieces as I need them. So my next step was to add the correct layers to the birds. On the blue jay there was one piece that I cut out of tan instead of blue. So I'll have to color that one but I think I did pretty good matching up the pieces. Um, I used brown for all of the beaks. There, these were a little tricky to figure out which one went with, with what bird. So it did take me a bit, but the back of the packaging, definitely don't get rid of that because you will, you'll want to use that to match up the pieces. So um, I did try to put the correct size eyeball on each of the birds based on the picture. Um, some of them look kind of weird, but I used some additional Copic markers to make some of the pieces darker just to make them stand out a little bit from the color of the body. And then I glued these together off camera. Now for my sentiments, in the past I've always just lined up my sentiment stamps in rows and then stamped them out, but then discovered after the fact that I had placed them too close together on my Misty stamping platform to be able to use dies to cut them out anyway. Now these are not part of the Crafty Courtyard kit. These banner dies are from my stash. Some of these are stitched, um, but I did, I used these, I laid them out first so that I could use them as a guide to make sure that I spaced the stamps out enough. So I placed the stamps that would fit in each of the banners on top and then I used the door to pick up the stamps and then I removed the dies. I'm using a scrap piece of white ice rink heavyweight cardstock so that it will match my card bases. When I have brand new stamps that haven't been conditioned yet, I like to use VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, which is a pigment ink. It usually stamps perfectly the first time I stamp with it, and then this primes the stamp for adding other inks later. I placed all of the dies back on top, and then I cut all of these sentiments out. Now for these banner pieces, I cut these out earlier off camera for a few of the cards, so now I need to stamp on them, but I would suggest not doing it this way. I thought about editing this part out of my video, but I decided to keep it in so you could learn from my mistakes. I uh, brought out my stamp wheel since it has the sticky mat and it would normally hold my cardstock down while I stamp on it. It held the white cardstock just fine, but the banner that I colored with the Copic marker and then the banner with the metallic paper, they neither one of those would stick for some reason. So I tried tacking it down with my mint tape and that didn't work very well either. But since these, since there are some dark pink flowers in the pattern paper, I decided to stamp that first sentiment using Dress Shop ink to match it. And I used the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink on the other two. But this is where I messed up. Not only did I not align the stamp very well on the orange banner, I also forgot that ink that's stamped on foil or metallic paper does not dry. Or at least that's what's happened to me every time I've ever tried it. But at this point, I had already stamped it when I remembered. So I added another coat of ink anyway to just help, help darken up that pink on the top banner. And so at this point, I thought I'd try adding some clear embossing powder on top to heat emboss it. I didn't use an anti-static powder tool beforehand, and it all stuck to the foil paper wherever I applied the powder. So I tried brushing off the excess with a paintbrush, but I just couldn't get between the letters. So I decided to try adding heat just to see what would happen. This metallic paper is pretty thin, so I kind of knew that it would warp beforehand, but I figured it was worth a shot. I let my heat gun heat up for 30 seconds before applying. 
Now I've zoomed in so you can possibly see that the results were not very good. It's really hard to tell on camera, but the clear powder melted all across the letters and it warped really bad. So I went back to the drawing board with these banners and I cut several out of that leftover purple cardstock. I stamped the same sentiments that were already placed on the wheel and then I colored the curved fishtail banners that go on the back with a darker shade of purple. It looks darker when you first apply it, but then it dries lighter. So it's really hard to tell that they're different. But anyway, I glued the fishtail banner pieces on the back. And the best way to get these to line up or um, where they need to be is to try to line up the edges, making sure to leave a little curve along the opposite side of where the fishtail end will be. And I added these to my cellophane bags. So now it's time to assemble the cards. Since I've shown you the process from selecting papers, cutting them and the layers, plus cutting out the dies and stamping my sentiments, I'm only going to show how these will be laid out on the card and I'll glue them off camera just to save time. I think this video would be really long if I didn't. There's a lot of little pieces, so even with me speeding the video up, it would still take a while to show the assembly process for all eight cards. I try to keep my videos around 20 minutes no more than 30 if I can help it but if you'd rather see the entire process including the assembly and don't mind having a long video to watch please let me know down in the comments I'd love to hear your feedback so of course I'm placing the card sketch up on the screen as well if this is your first time visiting my channel I hope you'll consider subscribing I create card challenges every quarter and they are free to download from my patreon site during the quarter once a new challenge begins, the older ones get archived. So if you're watching this video after September 30th of 2024, you can still find the past challenges under the collections tab on my Patreon. And they're also linked on my website down at the bottom of my homepage at kindrascardchallenges.com. You can either join as a paid patron to get access to multiple challenges, depending on the tier that you choose, or you can purchase the challenges without becoming a member. You'll see the buy now option on the posts. Now, this is a recent change that I made on my Patreon. So if you've been a subscriber to my channel and you're not a paid patron, you can go all the way back to challenge one to see lots of card making ideas. Now, over the years, this challenge has grown and evolved, and I'm so excited that we have so many companies who support us by donating prizes. So not only will you have a wonderful set of coordinating cards by completing the challenge, you can have a chance to win prizes both monthly and quarterly. These prizes are valued at over $1,000, you guys. Pink and Main has been a prize sponsor of Kendra's Card Challenges since challenge number three, and we're currently on 15. But I absolutely love working with these Crafty Courtyard kits. They really are a great value. You get all the products that I showed at the beginning of this video for only $34.99 plus shipping, which is an awesome deal. So you get two die sets, two stamp sets, paper, cardstock, embellishments, twine. That's a lot of crafty goodies. Now some kits do sell out, but if they don't, you can purchase past kits and some of the items in the kit are sold individually on the Pink and Main website. So if you happen to be watching this after July of 2024 and you missed out on getting the kit, you can try to find some of the, you know, the papers and um, some of the other things like the embellishments. So I hope you'll use my affiliate links to shop at Pink and Main if you decide that you'd like to subscribe to the kits or purchase any of their products. By using these links, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you, and this helps to support my channel, and it also helps to keep the challenges free each quarter. So this is the last of the eight cards. I'll show a quick look at all of the cards again. I really love how these turned out, and I hope you do too. I'd love it if you would leave me a comment and let me know which card is your favorite. Also, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Now for more information about how to download the PDF for Challenge 15, you'll find all of the links down in the description box, including the link to my Challenge Facebook group. This is a wonderful community of crafters, and you'll find tons of card making inspiration there. Now you will have to answer a few questions before you'll be approved to join, but I hope you'll check it out. Now Pink and Main also has a card making group specifically for the Crafty Courtyard kits, and I will link that below as well. I really hope this video has inspired you to get creative and I hope you'll give the challenge a try and join us for a chance to win some prizes, including monthly prize packs and a $25 gift certificate from Pink and Main. I'd appreciate it if you'd give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. 
Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank <music> you.